Welcome to Module 2 of the Kentucky Professional Standards for Educational Leaders Guidance for Growth and Evaluation Professional Learning Series. In this module, you will learn about the development of the performance levels embedded in the Kentucky PCEL Guidance for Growth and Evaluation Tool, as well as gain a firm understanding of the progression components that support growth and advancement from one performance level to the next. It is recommended that you watch the modules in sequential order. Thus, if you have not watched Module 1, please access that module before continuing. All of the modules are readily available on the Principal Partnership Project Google site. Each module is approximately 15 minutes in length. Once again, welcome to Module 2. So let's review some key information that was included in Module 1. The use of the National PCEL standards for principals and assistant principals is required per 704-KAR-3-370 as part of the Kentucky Framework for Personnel Evaluation. With the change in standards and to equip leaders in the highly effective implementation of PCEL, the Kentucky Department of Education brokered a partnership with a variety of stakeholder groups to support the construction of a critical resource, the Kentucky PCEL Guidance for Growth and Evaluation Tool. Representatives from schools, districts, cooperatives, and principal prep programs from across the Commonwealth devoted extensive time to the development of the support tool designed specifically for Kentucky educators, by Kentucky educators. To emphasize again, the jointly developed PCEL tool is an optional resource for schools and districts. The document is designed to support the required implementation of the national standards PCEL. The support tool includes four performance level columns with the headings ineffective, developing, accomplished, and exemplary. Please note that the exact element text from the National PCEL document is what is included in the accomplished column. The element is the accomplished performance level. Through progressive language, the document illustrates what the element looks like at all four levels. The construction of progressive language for the ineffective, developing, and exemplary performance levels was created by Kentucky practitioners. Recognizing the need for continuity in the tool, the Kentucky practitioners developed common qualities for each of the performance levels. We will examine those qualities now. For example, in the ineffective level, Common threads of poor practice are woven into the category. A pattern of unacceptable performance is a glaring attribute of this level. Additionally, the need for swift improvement that requires immediate attention and monitoring is an obvious feature of the ineffective level. Language that is most often connected to the ineffective level is negatively impacts, unable, unwilling, restricts, lacks, unaware, and unsuccessfully. As ineffective is the lowest level of performance, when examining the next level, developing, language reflects an increase in performance expectation. In the developing level, having knowledge and awareness of effective leadership practice is a core component. However, in this level, there is inconsistent or minimal execution of effective leadership practices. As well, effort may be apparent, but there is minimal evidence of impact. Essential language that might be used to showcase this category is limited implementation, attempts to develop, basic, and inconsistent. 
Progressing to the next highest performance level, accomplished, is where the expectation of the standard is identified. This is the goal. The accomplished level represents the element word for word. In this performance category, the expectation of consistent, proficient performance is highlighted. Language that correlates to the accomplished level includes ensures most, builds and sustains, develops and consistently implements. To reiterate, accomplished is the element goal. The top tier of the performance level progression is the exemplary level. The exemplary level surges beyond the standard expectation and showcases a continuous demonstration of expertise and strategic capacity building. There is a significant lift in language and expectation for the advancement to the exemplary performance level. Descriptive language that illustrates this level could possibly include ensures all, builds and sustains, supports development of all, builds the capacity of others, and consistently implements. Language is clearly important and purposeful when reflecting and planning for growth and improvement in the, in the performance levels. Language is also especially important when it comes to understanding the content of PCEL. Upon doing some deep review of PCEL, the Commissioner's Principal Advisory Council, known as PRAC, did a language comparison between the old principal standards and the new standards PCEL. Acknowledging the ever-changing responsibilities and duties of a principal and or assistant principal, the inclusion of new language in PCEL was a validating attribute of the document by present practitioners. You can see the vast amount of language included in PCEL that was not evident in our old standards. These are examples of how the work of the principal has drastically changed since 2010. For instance, indicating the importance of equity and inclusiveness, the phrase children at the center of education is noted. Wordage such as align and focus systems, promote student love of learning, healthy sense of self, are new pieces of practice included. As well, notice, for example, that effective use of technology was not listed in any previously utilized standard. As well, the idea of promoting a work-life balance has never been included in required leadership standards for Kentucky principals and or assistant principals. These are merely a subset of the possible examples of new language. So with this new language in these standards, there comes the issue of what does this new language look like in practice? Let's examine the yellow coded standard element about work-life balance as a means to conceptualize this element in a progression format. There are two elements in standard six that address work-life balance, element H and element I. Let's examine element H first. Element H is focused on the school leader's efforts to support the success and well-being of school personnel. At the accomplished level, it states that an accomplished school leader should promote the personal and professional health, well-being, and work-life balance of faculty and staff. First off, the verb promotes is critical to interpret the intent of this standard. Promotes means to further the progress of, support, or actively encourage. So, according to the element, the principal and or assistant principal should be helping to ensure all faculty and staff are positively progressing in this noted area. A question to consider. What might it look like when a school leader is contributing to the improvement of personal and professional health, well-being, and work-life balance of those in the school? Now, let's take a step backward and look at the developing performance level. 
At the developing level, it states that a developing school leader exerts effort to design structures to support the personal and professional health, well-being, and work-life balance of faculty and staff. However, there is limited implementation and moderate impact. So a close look at this language indicates the school leader is exerting some degree of effort to support, but there is minimal implementation and insignificant impact. A specific strategy of designing structures is identified as a means of support, thus indicating knowledge and awareness of the need to do something in regard to the expectation of the element. In the ineffective performance level, it states that an ineffective school leader vocalizes support for the personal and professional health, well-being, and work-life balance of faculty and staff. However, does not demonstrate correlating action and or over time restricts school personnel from prioritizing personal and professional health, well-being and work-life balance. Basically, the school leader says it is important for faculty and staff to focus on health, well-being, and work-life balance, but actions do not align with what is communicated. Thus, the school leader's attempts are unsuccessful. Now, let's examine the language in the exemplary performance level. It states that an exemplary school leader champions systems and structures designed to ease the challenge of achieving work-life balance for faculty and staff, while also purposefully addressing and assessing their professional health and well-being through strategic support and expertise. What language is evident that provides clarity as to the lift from accomplished to exemplary? Going back to the verb in accomplished, the verb is promotes. Notice the verb in the exemplary level is champions. What does it mean to champion something? To champion means to support and defend the cause, to advocate. In doing something that intense, there is the added component of passion, conviction, and commitment. As well, in this category, the expected level of expertise is included along with the inclusion of strategic supports. The same structural design is evident in element I. Language will illustrate the performance levels relative to the intent of the standard. We will quickly review the progression of element I. To begin, element I is focused on the school leader's efforts to his or her own professional success and personal well-being. The accomplished level states, tends to their own learning and effectiveness through reflection, study, and improvement, maintaining a healthy work-life balance. This statement indicates the importance of self in developing professionally and personally. It is about ownership of the school leader in ensuring professional and personal growth occurs while also focusing on the necessity of prioritizing a healthy work-life balance. Then, looking at the developing level, it states, inconsistently focuses on own learning and effectiveness utilizes limited tools for growth, and sporadically uses strategies to achieve a healthy work-life balance. Key words that correlate to developing practice are inconsistently, limited, and sporadically. Turning our attention to the ineffective level for element I, it states, dismisses the importance of personal growth and or trivializes the possibility of achieving a healthy work-life balance. Words like dismisses and trivializes reflects an unwillingness on the part of the school leader to achieve the element expectation. 
Lastly, from the exemplary level, it states, purposefully models the value of self-directed learning and increased effectiveness through strategic reflection, targeted study, and outcomes-based personal growth while stimulating interest in innovative ways to prioritize and sustain a healthy work-life balance. Key words that correlate to exemplary practice include purposefully models, increased effectiveness, targeted, outcomes-based, stimulating interest, innovation, prioritize, and sustain. Hopefully, this examination of performance level progressions provided clarity on that aspect of the Kentucky PCEL guidance for growth and evaluation tool. In the next module, we will be examining two additional aspects that support highly effective usage of the tool. In module three, we will explore critical attributes. Kentucky practitioners developed critical attributes for each standard to provide a broad view of how the standard might look in practice. This portion is very similar to the critical attributes section of the Kentucky Framework for Teaching. In Module 3, we will also review the possible examples portion of the tool. Possible examples were also developed by present Kentucky practitioners. In closing, we have provided contact information on the slide with email hyperlinks. For PCEL questions, feel free to reach out to any KDE employee listed on the slide. Thank you for participating in Module 2 of the PCEL Professional Learning Series.